This, ladies and gentlemen, is question number two that we'll be having on the test we take next week. There are only seven questions. If you watched the previous video, I've already given you question number one for the test. This is question number two. It is a gridable. You have to bubble in correctly. So before we even start the question, I want to identify the place values. This place value, here's my decimal point. It's two places behind the decimal point, so that makes this the hundredths. This is one place behind the decimal point, so that makes this the tenths. Here's my decimal point. Directly in front of the decimal point is the ones, then the tens, and then the hundreds. Okay, so once I know my decimal points, and if you think of this as money, this goes out to the pennies, goes out to the hundred dollars, no more than no more than nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents is going to fit on here. But the key is to make sure that you line up where your decimal point is. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The words coming out of my mouth are just saying. All right, so let's look at this first problem. Actually, it's the second problem on the test that you'll take next week. What's up, Mr. Paul? Farmer Lee grows tomatoes and squash. He harvests 49 and 92 hundredths kilograms of tomatoes and 65 and 92 hundredths kilograms of squash. He distributes the tomatoes and the squash into 32 farm share baskets. How many more kilograms of squash than tomatoes does each basket contain? All right, so let's look at this first. We have two kinds of vegetables. We have tomatoes and we have squash. We have 32 baskets. So we're taking what we have. We're taking what we have, which is the tomatoes and the squash, and we're putting it evenly into 32 different baskets. So we want to take this evenly. 32 baskets. Evenly into 32 baskets. Each basket is going to have both squash and tomatoes. So both in each basket. So we're going to have both squash and tomatoes in each basket. So we have the weight of the tomatoes is here, and the weight of the squash is here. So I know the squash the squash is 65 and 92 hundredths kilograms. And the tomatoes are 49 and 92 hundredths kilograms. Forty-nine and ninety-two hundredths kilograms. So we're going to take what we have for squash and what we have for tomatoes, and we're going to divide that up into the baskets. So this is going to be have to be divided into the 32 baskets evenly. This is going to be have to be divided into the 32 baskets evenly. So we're taking these two things, dividing them into 32. You walk around, this goes in one basket, two baskets, three ba all the way to 32. Seems like a lot of work, but, you know, Farmer Lee hires somebody to do all that for you. So if you need a job, call Farmer Lee. He'll have you do it. But you got to know how to do the math. We want to know how many more kilograms of squash than tomatoes does each basket have. 
So our question, that's supposed to be a question mark, kind of looks like a seven with a dot underneath it. Our question is, how many more kilograms of squash in each basket than tomatoes. Now let me ask you this. Do we know how much squash is in each basket? Nope. We do not. We know how much total squash there is, but we don't know how much in each of the baskets. Do we know how much tomatoes in each basket? Nope. We know how much the total weight in kilograms of the tomatoes, but we don't know how much is in each basket. So the first thing we have to do and the second thing we have to do is find out how much squash in each basket and how much tomatoes in each basket. So let's start with the squash. Start with the squash. I always want to say squash. Start with the squash. Okay, so we have this much, 65 and 92 hundredths kilograms of the squash, and we're dividing that into 32 baskets. 32 equal baskets. So I'm going to make this much weight into 32 equal groups. My decimal point comes straight up and then essentially I'm done with it. I don't even need to look at it again. Does 32 go into 6? No. Does 32 go into... Well, let's, let's think for a minute first. If I said... Work with me here. If I said 30 into 60, that's going to go in two times. 30 into 60 is going to go in two times. So that's going to put my answer somewhere around 2 point something. 2 and some, some amount of hundredths. Okay, so my answer needs to be around there. So that's a good place to start. I know 32 won't go into 6, but 32 will go into 65. How many times will 32 go into 65? Well, since I can count by 32s, I know 32 times 2 is 64. So if I put 32 times 2 and make that 64, subtract, I get a 1, then I bring down a 9. I know I have to have a number above the 9 and a number above the 2, because once I put a number in my quotient, Every number behind it has to have something above it in the quotient. So now I've got to ask myself, self, how many times does 32 go into 19? Well, if I have 19, can I break it into groups of 30? No, I can't. So it's going to go in there zero times. And 32 times zero, so I still have 19. Now I bring down the 2. Now I'm going to do my counting by 30s again because, you know, like I said in the last video, I've seen $30 bills on TV. I've never had them because I'm a teacher, so I can count by 30. And if I go 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, okay, and then 210. 210 is going to be too big. So I'm going to try 6. And I'm going to see what 32 times 6 is. And it is exactly 192. So 2 and 6 hundredths. 2 and 6 hundredths is the squash. So I'm going to make a little note here. The squash equals 2 and 6 hundredths kilograms per basket. The squash equals two and six hundredths kilograms per basket. Now we need to figure out the tomatoes. Well, same deal. We have 49 and 92 hundredths kilograms of tomatoes. We're putting them evenly into 32 baskets. Evenly into 32 baskets. So, well, I'm dividing with a decimal and a dividend. My decimal point comes straight up. Does 32 go into 4? Nope. Does 32 go into 49? Yep. 
And if I just rounded 30 into 50, it's not going to go in twice. So I know that's going to be 1, which does make it less than the squash. And since we have to find the difference between the squash and the tomatoes, we're in good shape. Decimal point straight up. Then we're done with it. I don't have to look at it anywhere else. Is 32 going to 4? I already said no. Is 32 going to 49? Yes. One time. And I know that because I know 32 times 2 is 64 because I already figured that out over here. I already did 32 times 2 is 64. Boom, shakalaka. That's why I don't erase my work. Finding the work's important. I have it here. I already know my 32 times 6. So I'm brilliant. 32 times 1 is 32. Okay, so I subtract, I get 17, and that's less than 32, so that means I've done something correct here. I bring down my 9, 32 goes into 179. Well, I know it has to be less than 6, because I know 32 times 6 is 192. Because I saved my work. Save your work, don't do it in a race and all that other crazy stuff. It just makes it insane. So now, I'll take 32, and I know it's less than 6, so let's see if it's 5 or less. 32 times 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. So that would give me 160. Perfect. Because I know 6 is too big, because that's 192, so it's got to be 5. And 5 times 32 is 160. And I subtract. I get 19, which is less than my divisor. After I subtract, it always has to be less than my divisor, which it is, so I'm good. I bring down my 2, because that's my next number i got to bring down. And I have, I need to divide 32 into 192. Well, I already know 32 times 6 is 192 because I didn't erase my work. I'm saving it. Saving it. Okay? So I know that's 6 without having to even do any other math that, I've already, that I haven't already done. So now I know my tomatoes equals 1 and 56 hundredths kilograms. Now, if I go back and I look at my question, I want to know how much more squash than tomatoes in the basket. So that means I'm going to have to subtract. <clears throat> 6 subtract 6 is 0. My decimal point comes straight down. So I have the difference is... 50 hundredths or 5 tenths. Now, the answer on your paper on the test is going to have to be gridded in. Remember, as I said on the grid before, always start by identifying your place value. My place value, or my decimal point is here. My 5 is in the tenths place. And so I have to make sure I put my 5 in the tenths place. I go down. I bubble in the 5. I can put a 0 here. And it's not going to mark it wrong, which is great, but you have to make sure your digit is in relation to, to your decimal point. That's the whole key on this, because it would stink to do a problem and do all of this stuff right that I did here and get the problem wrong because I put my number in the incorrect decimal point or in the incorrect place value. So when you get to number two on that, on that quiz then this is the answer. But look, save your work on your paper because it comes back to help you. Too many of you, like when we're finding greatest common factor and least common multiple, you're doing, okay, let's find all the factors of 24. And then you're done with that problem, so you erase it. Well, then three problems later, it asks for 24, but you, you'd already done it once if you just leave it. Just make your answer easy enough for your teacher to find. So that's problem number two. I'm going to pause it. I'm going to write down problem number three. And then we'll do problem number three. And then I'll probably call it quits for the day. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. I'm just pausing. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. 
All right, I'm back. Did you miss me? Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. You're taking to heart. Be kind to one another, and I appreciate that. All right, so problem three on the test. And I always like to read these problems more than once. A florist sells a dozen roses for $29.88. What is the cost of one rose? Okay, so a florist sells a dozen roses for $29.88. What is the cost of one rose? Then I need to ask myself, self, is one rose going to cost more than or less than $29.88? Well, if a dozen costs $29.88, then hopefully one rose costs less. So my answer is going to be less than $29.88. But there's also something up here that I have to know that I don't know right now. I have to know how much is in a dozen. How much is in a dozen? Now... You probably don't go into the refrigerator and look at the eggs at your house. But what you probably do is you've seen a box with a dozen donuts in it. I like to relate things that you have experience with to what I'm doing. A dozen is 12. Okay? So if I go back and, and I'm going to replace where it says dozen with the number 12. A florist sells 12 roses for $29.88. What is the cost of one rose? So you go in, you buy, let's, let's just see how this works here. Because y'all are cool and you want to take care of your mom, your stepmom, your grandma, your grandpa, your sister, your aunt Darlene, you're going to go in and you're going to buy a dozen roses. So you're going into this place and the florist says, that's $29.88. And so you pay that, and they give you the roses. Well, I'm not as cool. And so I'm thinking, one rose? That'd be, I mean, that's enough, right? They're going to know I love them, even if I just give them one rose. So this is what I'm doing, is I'm only buying one because I'm a cheapskate. So if 12 costs $29.88, and I want to know how much one is, then I'm going to have to obviously do some division. The $29.88 is what I'm breaking into groups, and I'm breaking it into 12 groups. Okay? My dividend, $29.88. My divisor, 12. And I need to find my quotient. My quotient is going to tell me how much one rose costs. Division with the decimals, my decimal point comes straight up, and then basically I'm done with it. Basically I'm done with it. You have a multiplication chart at your at your access, so you could use that because it has 12s on it. Makes it easy. Is 12 going to 2? No. Does 12 go to 29? Yes. I'm going to have a three digit number. I'm going to have in the dollars, I'm going to have dimes, and I'm going to have pennies. Dollars, dimes, and pennies. So now because I have my multiplication chart, 12 goes into 29, I know. 12, 24, 36. So I know it goes in 2. And I know 2 times 12 is 24. And that's subtract, which is less than my divisor. So after I subtract, if it's less than my divisor, I'm in good shape. I bring down my next number, which is an 8. Now I know my multiples of 12, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, well, 60 is too big, so 48 is where I'm going to be, and so that is by 4. 4 times 12 is 48, and that gives me 10, and I bring down the 8. So again... I need to know my multiples of 12, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, 96, 108. So that's 9. So 9 times 12 is 108. Subtract and get a 0. 
So if I go back and I answer my question, one rose cost $2.49. One rose cost $2.49. Notice where my decimal point is, so that when I go over here, my two is in my ones place, it's directly in front of the, de the decimal point. My four is in my tenths. My nine is in my hundredths. I would two dollars and 49 cents. I could leave these blank in the front. I could put zeros there if I want to, but it makes more sense to uh, say two dollars and 49 cents like that. I mean, honestly, you wouldn't write, hey, one rose costs... When you go to the store, you don't see anything written like that. So $2.49 is, is what our answer would be. So that's problem number three on the test we're going to take next week. Hopefully you're watching YouTube. Hopefully you're watching that we did this. I also posted pictures of the questions on um, Mr. McMurdo's fifth grade on my Facebook page, Mr. McMurdo 5th grade. So you can look there and work ahead if you want. You can print them out, write down your answers, cut them out, blow them in your journal, however you want to do it. Um, but I'm expecting all A's, hopefully, on this as we go over it. I will tell you the last question, which I'm not going to make a video of, but the last question says, how many prime numbers are there between 1 and 100? And then it says, list them. How many prime numbers are there between 1 and 100? And then list them. Well, you have your prime number chart. Please, for the love of Pete, if you don't have a key on your prime number chart, the circled numbers are prime. The crossed off numbers are composite. If you don't have that on there, write it on there. So you don't ask me every day, which one's it prime? Are the crossed off ones prime? Are the circled ones prime? Which one's it prime, 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 prime? I'm just trying to make your life easier, folks. All right. Peace out. God bless. I love you. Do something kind for someone today and every other day.